Yes, it's broken. Welcome to Car Spy TV. This, of course, is an air compressor for pumping up tyres and so on. And as we've heard, it does come on and make a noise, but irritatingly, there's no air coming up the nozzle there. So clearly the thing to do is to take it apart and see if we can figure out why. And to do that, we first need to undo that screw there, that one there, a couple at the bottom down there, and I strongly suspect, just for luck, that one in there as well. Where are my tools? Now I bought this air compressor for my stepdaughter and she's clearly not looked after it because after a mere 10 years of nearly constant use, it's packed up. So that really screams of abuse. I'll be having a stiff word with her later. I'll remind her that Father Christmas is always watching. And if you abuse your gifts, he won't turn up. Right. Right, so I've removed the five screws I pointed out to you earlier, and I've only lost one of them, which by my standard is pretty good going. I've also removed four smaller screws from there and there, so we can now just lift off this base plate. And I think, fingers crossed, that is pretty much all we got to do to open this thing up, except, by the look of it, just remove this rubber foot there. There we are. It's already missing a foot from there, which is further sign of misuse for my stepdaughter. She's in big trouble. Right, let's see if this thing opens up now. Not so easy one-handed while holding a camera. <laughs> Hang on, I'm gonna put the camera down. Okay, let's quickly summarize how this air compressor works, or more accurately, how it's supposed to work. So here, this big silver thing, that is an electric motor. And if I spin the propeller at this end, we can see that the output shaft down there at the end of my screwdriver, which has a gear on it, spins. That in turn spins this larger gear, and that larger gear moves this connecting rod up and down. See that, or it's supposed to, hang on. There we are. And then if you keep an eye here, up there, at the end of the connecting rod, you'll see the bottom of a piston appear in a moment. Ready? There it is. And as that piston goes up and down in the cylinder, it compresses the air in the cylinder, and that gets fired down this line here, comes out of there, and fills up your tire, in theory. But clearly this one's broken, and it's quite obvious why. There are further signs of abuse, I'm afraid. My stepdaughter must have beaten this thing with a stick. OK, if we have a closer look at this large gear here, we can see what's wrong with this air compressor. Note that it's held in place by this piece of metal here that for the sake of ease we'll call a bracket. Well, that bracket has sheared off. I shall show you. Are you ready? Here it comes. Yeah, there we go. Look at that absolutely sheared off. So that means when this compressor is plugged into the car, the electric motor spins exactly as it should. That of course spins the output shaft on the motor down there and the associated smaller gear. But because this larger gear isn't held in place properly, it's not being driven by the smaller gear, which in turn means the connecting rod can't go up and down like that and drive the piston. And if the piston doesn't move, <laughs> You're not going to get any air out of there. Oh dear. Well, it's always nice when you take something apart and can definitively see what's wrong. I do think, though, realistically, this compressor is beyond repair. It did cross my mind to glue the bracket back together, but I think the energy of that piston firing up and down would simply break it again, probably the first time it's used. So I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll undo a few more screws and see if we can find out anything else interesting. So, as you can see, I have now completely removed the mechanism from the case. There's the big gear, there's the connecting rod, pressure gauge. This is what's left of the on-off switch. There we go. And here 
is a close-up of the bracket that's sheared off. See that? But I tell you what I didn't disconnect. I didn't disconnect that 12 volt power connector and that means we can plug this thing back into the car and see if it still spins. It will be interesting to see how many fingers I have left at the end of this experiment. Okay, so we're now plugged into the car and what I'm doing is holding the bracket together as best I can with my fingers. So I've got to be careful not to get my fingers chewed up in the gears at this end of the motor or indeed the propeller at this end of the motor. You can probably tell that I don't work for the health and safety executive. Anyway, let's have a go. Now, are my fingers as safe as they realistically can be? I would say yes. Okay, so let's press the button and see what happens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, we got away with that one. And at least we know why this air compressor packed up. So that'll do for this video. Don't forget to subscribe to Car Spy TV if you haven't already. Do me a favor and click like on this video, and I'll see you next time. Hopefully, you're doing something a bit less dangerous.